Hello and welcome to a very English craft room. Scrapbooking video 2. This is a double page layout entitled Dead or a Jive. For these pages I will be using photographs taken of an outfit I made for myself for our dance school's Halloween social dance. So I start by sifting through the papers in my orange paper box um, I store my papers in 12x12 pizza boxes by colour and by theme. Once I've found the paper that I want to use, I set up my Cricut, uh, attach it to the laptop, and then I program it to cut out some Halloween-related uh, files. I've speeded up this process on the video because there's only so much you can watch of a, a Cricut cutting out bits of paper. My cutting mats are actually really ready for replacement, hence why I'm using one that's actually designed to be a really strong sticky one, but actually right now it isn't. The original design for this skirt was a bit like a poodle skirt, but with a black cat rather than a poodle, and I will scrap that for the second page of this double spread layout. This black cardstock is from a pack that um, is black on one side and then the colour of the branding strip on the other side. Not really keen on the finish of the coloured sides, so I tend to use it more for the black. So I cut the branding strip off and now I'm looking at where to place the photographs within this pumpkin frame that I cut out on the Cricut. So the second year that I used this skirt, I actually then attached some pumpkin eyes, nose and mouth to the back of the skirt to make it look like a big pumpkin. You'll see the shirt that I was wearing as well as a sort of jacket had a pumpkin on it and the words dead or a jive as a bit of a play on words from dead or alive and the fact that at the dance school we do jive. So now you can see I'm just trying out different bits of paper to see what would look good with the photographs uh, to back this cut file. I've been going to the same dance school for a number of years now. Um, for those of you who watch Strictly Come Dancing, it's actually run by the parents of Kevin and Joanne Clifton. Um, and we have a lot of fun there doing our dancing in normal times. However, currently it's all online due to COVID lockdown. So now I'm going to try and stick the photographs uh, behind this cut file. Um, I had difficulty working out which was going to be the best way to do so and you'll see there I stuck tape where it wasn't needed because it wasn't going to stick to anything at that time so I removed it and put it elsewhere where it would. One of the things I really miss um, due to lockdown is attending my dance classes. It's great fun and keeps you fit. None of us claim to be experts but we all have a good time. I also miss my scrapbooking club which uh, normally meets once a month, however again we've had to stop down due to lockdown so hopefully spring 2021 will allow us to do some of the things that we've been missing. So now I'm just roughly cutting some bits of card to stick behind some of the gaps on this cut file. I didn't measure them very precisely uh, and most of the time that worked out well. You'll see there is one bit um, a bit later where I do have to do a little bit of trimming to make it fit. Orange isn't a colour that I scrap very often, although recently I have done two or three pages using orange. Comment down below if there's a colour you don't use very often and have maybe started using uh, more frequently recently. As a lot of my past scrapbooking pages were about cruises, um, I did tend to use an awful lot of blue. However, I do seem to have about four pizza boxes worth of blue 12x12 12 12 paper left, so maybe that's a hint to myself that I should stop buying any more blue paper. One of the online challenges that I've been taking part in has recently had a weekly challenge, so uh, they give one colour per week for you to try and scrap. So that's actually been challenging me to maybe think outside the box and use some different ones that I haven't used before. So you'll see I stuck double sided tape around the edges of the cut file and I haven't undone any of the backing tape yet because I just want to get the position right onto the backing paper there, the black. So now I'm just going to remove the very top line of uh, the double sided and again just get the positioning right then if I stick it down um, I can then remove the rest. This allows you some sort of 
degree of being able to move it if you can without actually having committed to sticking the whole thing down which can then often ruin your paper. I apologise if you can hear any hissing or crackling uh, from this microphone. It's just one I've been using all the time but for some reason today it just seems to be playing up. So now I'm just trying to decide which of the embellishments I want to use and where on the layout I wish to use them. I didn't want to use too much up near the top because the two photographs being up there and also with having the large pumpkin in the middle. So before I place anything else I decided I wanted to actually pop my title down um, and then I could sort of do the embellishments around there. So I'm using these sort of orangey gold um, letter stickers that I got in a set from Amazon with multiple different colours. So to ensure that the title was as straight as I could possibly get it, I've used the T-square there. I was trying to get it evenly spaced along the bottom, but uh, it took a little bit of fiddling to get it right, even though I had measured it out. Um, for some reason, my measurements just didn't seem to work um, on that day. So again, having a little fiddle, just to see if I can get it right. And I think it takes two or three goes to get it where I want it to be. I store all my embellishments and all my alphas uh, by colour and by theme. So the embellishments I have in little tubs, one per colour. Um, some I've got in a stacking tub with each layer being a different colour. And the uh, alphas are in a large box which each colour is in a separate plastic bag. So I've run the orange part of this little pumpkin cut file through my Xyron sticker maker. Um, it does tend to leave a little gooiness between uh, each of the holes there and you can see I was just poking them out to clear them so they don't show. I then got an old cut mat out which I use for gluing and use some green glitter glue just to highlight the vine on this pumpkin um, just to add a little bit of colour there. I also decided to give the pumpkin some green eyes as well and this will reflect the eyes on the cat on the second page. So as I hadn't allowed the glitter glue on that pumpkin to dry, I actually stuck the double sided tape to the layout rather than to the back of the little pumpkin. So now having another fiddle with the embellishments to see where I want them. I can never remember where I've put them and at times I do take a photograph and refer back to that, but I haven't done that this time. So having a bit of a play round, uh, you can see I've really speeded it up here. So now I know roughly where I want things to go, it's time to start sticking them down. So again, I went to use my Xyron sticker maker, however it's at the very end of the roll of sticky tape um, and I need to go and get some more from out of the cupboard, so this wasn't actually very successful. I managed a few bits, but uh, not all of it, so I end up using double sided tape um, to place most of the items. When using double sided tape on the buttons, I do sometimes use a little bit more than the length of the button but then fold it over to make it look neat, as you'll see I was doing there. wanted to get this little pumpkin underneath the letter there from Dead. So the little pumpkin there um, have used up the very last part of the sticker maker and instead of it just putting adhesive where you wanted it, it just left a whole sort of rectangle of adhesive stuck to the back of it. So again, I just folded the edges in with that. As I'm recording this today, it's really is a bit wet and miserable weather outside. I hope it's a bit better where you are. So these three little embellishments I'd actually thought was part of the banner that I'd stuck at the top. I thought it all was stuck together, um, but it wasn't. So I ended up using them elsewhere in the layout just to add a little bit of sparkle here and there. So more buttons being stuck down. We're nearly finished at this stage. Uh, there goes the last one of those little ones that was on the banner. And here we are, the first page of the double spread layout now complete. So I'm just going to pop this to one side and then make a start on the bits I need for the second page. So for the second page I'm using some plain orange cardstock and a cat as I cut out on the Cricut, um, a title I cut out on the Cricut, photograph of the front of the skirt there you can see the cat on the poodle skirt, uh, there's the little title Happy Halloween and I uh, cut out a few pumpkins and I'm just trying to decide which ones to use and where to put them. 
So the cat at the moment is facing the same direction as the cat on the skirt, but he doesn't end up facing that way. So looking at the titles, so I wanted to put creepy and cute. So I found a banner that said creepy and a cut apart that had the word cute on it, which I cut out from the centre of that cut apart piece and a nice ampersand there which somehow I managed to lose during the process of filming and ended up having to use a different one in the end. So I decided to help with the continuity of the two pages but I would mat this photograph onto the paper I'd used to put behind the cut file of the pumpkin. So instead of having nice straight edges I decided I wanted some sort of rough edge so I just tore it along the edge of the ruler there um, this is easier when there's more paper on the edge than when you're trying to do little bits. So um, I didn't want a very precise looking finish. So using the double sided tape, the only reason I'd stuck a bit across the top is that's how it came off the roll and it seemed the perfect size for there. For some reason there was a cut in the length of tape, never had that happen to me before. So sticking it down onto the mat and now I'm going to try and play around with the placement of the different pieces. I really was thinking that I could have the cat's tail looping around the picture but it just didn't seem to look right to me so I turned the cat round and was much happier with the balance of that. So sticking the, the photograph down using the double sided tape um, onto the top right hand corner of the page and now I'm going to use some wet glue just to stick the cat's body onto the paper. Um, I will apply glue down the other legs and the tail afterwards just to hold it in place just using a small amount of glue. So there was a little bit of seepage around his tail there but actually once it had dried completely you couldn't see that at all. So sticking down the Happy Halloween title there using the same glue. Um, next I'm putting the green eyes on the cat using green glitter glue as I used on the other page. When I made the skirt, the eyes on the cat on the skirt actually had green gemstones, so I wanted to make the cat have green eyes on this. So here I am um, highlighting around some of the letters, just because I'd used black on black, but actually I think it actually gave a nice effect in the end. I also decided at this point to do the journaling using the white pen on the black cat here. Again, I think that looks quite nice when finished. I was just talking about how I'd made the skirt one year with the cat on and then added the pumpkin on after that. So all that's left after doing the journaling was to do the embellishments. I didn't need to use a lot of embellishments on here because the page was already quite full. So there we are, like some leaves and things to match the other page and buttons the same as the others. There you can see I used a much simpler ampersand. Um, I did actually find it a few days later and stuck it onto the page but I haven't taken a photograph of it to show you on here. You can see there's a little sparkly spider on that creepy banner at the top um, and the ribbon I had in my hair when I went to the social dance wearing this outfit had spiders and spiders webs on it so it was all a nice reflection. You can see where some of the glue has seeped through a little bit but again it dried and you can't see it once it has dried. So all that remains is me to thank you for joining me here on A Very English Craft Room and ask you to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hope to see you again soon in A Very English Craft Room.